Anti-junta rebels in Myanmar have taken control of some border outposts with India after forcing Myanmar army soldiers to flee. Dozens of troops crossed over to India to escape attacks by rebels. The violence in Chin state on the border with India is the latest of two new fronts that rebels have opened against the junta. The other is in Rakhine state. A joint coalition of rebels began a new offensive against the Myanmar army in October, beginning in northern Shan state on the border with China. The UN now says more than 200,000 people have been displaced due to the fighting. It's also the most serious challenge to the junta since it assumed power in a coup in 2021. Serious enough for China to call for a stop to the fighting and for the president of Myanmar to warn that the country could be at risk of breaking apart. Gunshots ring out at the border between Myanmar and India. As rebels in Myanmar fight the military junta. Thousands of people are fleeing the chaos and crossing over into India. Among them, soldiers from Myanmar's military junta. Many soldiers are surrendering to Mizoram state police. Others arrive injured. And 39 of them surrendered to Mizoram police last evening. As per order from MHA, we hand them over to border guarding force, that is samurai force. Yesterday, late in the evening. This morning again, we still captured two Myanmar army. And apart from that, another one is also injured. Within Myanmar, rebel groups have been gaining ground since October. They've taken control of several towns and security outposts in an effort to overthrow the military junta. Rebels seen here from the Myanmar National Democratic Alliance Army released this footage, showing what they say is a tank abandoned by the junta and a valuable stockpile of weapons now in their possession. Myanmar's junta came to power in 2021 in a coup, but its authority has never been challenged before at this level. Officials in neighboring China say they are worried about this conflict destabilizing the region. We are highly concerned about the conflict in northern Myanmar and urge all parties in Myanmar to immediately cease fire and stop fighting and ensure security and stability along the China-Myanmar border. For now, fighters on both sides look set to continue. The junta leaders saying they will hit back. The rebels determined to march on and rid the country of its dictatorship. And joining me for more from London is Mark Farmina. He's director of the NGO Burma Campaign UK. Mr. Farmina, these rebel attacks against the Myanmar military, would you call these a turning point in the fight to restore democracy in the country? Well, that's certainly how a lot of people in Myanmar are seeing it. We, it it's quite unprecedented to see, um, one, the different ethnic um, armies coming together to la launch these joint operations against the military and also to have such a, a rapid success. And that has encouraged other ethnic organizations, armed groups, and some of what's called the PDFs, People's Defense Forces, which people in the country have set up armed groups to resist the military. And so we're seeing um, increased attacks on military outposts in Rakhine state on the west, further south in Kareni state. Um, and the military so far seem incapable of countering these new offensives. But are all these rebel groups literally on the same page? Because they have fought the military for years, primarily for autonomy in their respective regions. Is that still their aim or is it the wider goal of restoring democracy to Myanmar? Well, I think what we've seen in most of them have been committed for a long time to federalism, to, to having uh, more autonomy rather than independence. Um, but they recognize that they need a, a, a democratic federal state for that to happen. Um, because of the pressure they've been under from the Burmese military for so long, 
um, they've mostly had to focus on their own areas of control to try to maintain those areas to the running their own administrations. Um, what's changed now in the last year is we've seen them going on the offensive and taking more territory from the Burmese military. And now in the past two weeks, this massive escalation in Shan State in the east, where an alliance of three ethnic armed organizations have managed to take dozens and dozens of military outposts and some significant towns as well. What has the impact been of this recent fighting on civilians in these border towns? Well, we've seen more than 50,000 people displaced already in Shan State. The true figure is probably higher than that, but it's difficult to verify because of the conflict and, and the difficulties in getting access there. Um, people are taking shelter anywhere they can. Some people are displaced in jungles. Some are going to other towns and villages. And there is a humanitarian crisis throughout the country now because well over 2 million people have been forced to flee their homes since the military coup in the beginning of 2021. And mm -hmm. a, a large number of those, the international community, the UN agencies and others have no access to be able to reach them. China here wants the fighting to stop and even sent a senior official to meet the junta. What is China's interest here? Well, China has significant economic interests. Um, it has, um, in this area, there's a, an important pipeline. Um, there is um, mining interest that they have. And, and they want some form of stability. But there's been, um, China is becoming more and more impatient with the Burmese military over these scam centers that have been run along the Myanmar China border, where thousands of Chinese citizens are have been pushed into effective slavery. Um, mm -hmm. And China's been calling for action on these for a long time now, and the Myanmar military have failed to take action. So it seems that having lost patience, the Chinese authorities have given these ethnic organizations on the border the go ahead to go ahead with their offensive. So uh, China's playing a careful game on the one hand, it's maintaining its sort of support and arms supplies and others to the military. But at the same time, it, it's it's also hedging its bets. And it, at the end of the day, a weak Myanmar military suits China's purposes in some ways, as long as there's not too much instability and refugees going across the border, because China can get a better deal, China has more influence, um, and the military become more dependent on them. We'll uh, leave it there uh, for the time being. Thanks so much for joining us today, Mark Farmina, director of the NGO Burma Campaign UK. Thanks very much.